Whoever gets the information first wins. Whoever gets the information first wins. The world has always been like this. The bankers who get the information first have the advantage. The army that knows where their enemy is before their enemy knows where they are has the advantage. Time is power. It's always been like this. And there is nothing faster than the Persian carriers. From 10,000 BCE, when this invention first started beginning, we've lived with this speed of horseback riding and sending messages this way as our fastest means for almost three million years now that we've been around, and that's it. Sure, there's been some improvements on the idea. When the couriers were late, the king called them before his chambers, why are you tardy? Oh, but the governors wouldn't let us pass. And then the king would call in the governors, what is the reason for not letting my messengers pass? Well, how could we know that these are the messengers of the king? Whereupon the king docked the horses and painted their manes and their tails so that everybody would know that the king's horses were coming through and not hinder their passage. He improved upon the system, but for three million years, the quickest that you could do is get a message from post to post. The Persian kings had set it up that the horse runs with the message as fast as he can, is far and infurious until finally he passes it off like a torch to the next, on and on and on until the message reaches it for three million years up until recently, and then boom. In only just the last hundred years, we've seen cars, planes skyrocketing faster than we could have ever imagined, hyperloops. Time has been decreased so significantly in just a hundred years. And then, boom, the internet. In 1993, 14 million people around the world could practically receive the same exact message within moments. In 1993 and 2005, there was a billion people online that could receive the same message practically within moments. Today, there are three billion people out of the seven billion people that are all connected, they can practically receive the same message at the same time. And to take that even further, Surprisingly, we are the generation, the single generation today that has reached the end of time. I mean, we are here now in real time. I don't mean the end of time as if the world blew up and spiraled into the sun. I mean, time is no longer relevant. It doesn't matter. When I send in information to you on the other side of the world, it is not important how long it takes. It's irrelevant the end of time. So after three million years, then a hundred years, just recently, boom. So you must be wondering, if not time, where is the advantage? What must one know in order to truly win the markets, the biggest markets? What must one know in order to win the greatest wars? What is the study, if not time? Memes. <laughs> you, think, you think I'm joking? Well, what is a meme? Uh, this is an internet meme. In a way, we could say it's like a meme. We call it a meme. It's a meme. But memes originally got their origin in biology evolutionary biologists were looking for a way to describe a similar process that happens with a gene. As you know, a gene has intrinsic properties which get passed on from one generation to the next, and depending upon the environment, they'll either succeed in their propagation or they won't. We have the intrinsic qualities of an idea, and we have the environment in which the idea spreads. So a meme is just like a gene, but for ideas. Well, so what is this? This is 
Again, we can call this a meme, but this is actually a representation of an idea. The actual photograph was taken in May of 2011. And this isn't the actual one, as you can see by the game controller in Barack Obama's hands. <laughs> but this is the one. The original photograph from 2011 that had some context behind it. What are they doing in this photo? It's such a powerful photo, it almost doesn't matter. We want to look at it. This is the kind of photo that is so strong. If you look at the, the intrinsic properties of this photo, this is arguably the most powerful team in the world. Not just posing, but doing the most powerful work. They're in the secret room that you're not supposed to see. What are they wearing? What is Hillary, think, what is she seeing? She's seen so much and yet she's shocked. It must be horrible. This is a representation for an idea that was related to one of the largest memes of our lifetime. The idea, simple. Bin Laden is dead. That's the idea. You didn't need this picture to communicate that idea. You could just say it. The president could have come up and said, we got him, Bin Laden is dead, and boom, the word spread. Did you hear? Oh my gosh, did you hear? Bin Laden is dead. Did you hear? <gasps> did you hear? <gasps> it was so impactful and so important. It spread so fluidly through the environment, we all became vessels. We became helpless to pass the message on from generation to generation. The intrinsic properties of the meme, of the idea, was so strong. What this image is, is a meme in the way that we call internet memes because it too has intrinsic properties and it got passed around. But ultimately its purpose was to encase the idea, to protect it to give it some additional value and security so that when they launched it out, they would guarantee its success. Did anybody ever see Bin Laden being killed? Nope. Did anybody ever see the raid? Nope. Did anybody ever see him buried at sea? Nope. Anybody ever see anything? No. All we ever saw was that picture. That was what they released, and it is so powerful, it did the job. All right, so now I'd like to talk to you about another meme. And this meme is so strong, I'm not even going to show it to you. It is so powerful and so intense, you don't want to see it. And I don't want you to see it. In fact, you probably know all about it, but I'll bet you haven't seen it because people have protected you from seeing it. It's the picture of the young Syrian boy, Ayan, he was found washed up on shore several months ago in his plight from the Syrian crisis on his way to Europe. A little boy, a photograph of him dead on the beach, washed up alone. Is there anybody out there that doesn't know the picture that I'm talking about? I know most of you probably haven't seen it, but is there anybody that ha does not know the image I'm talking about? There must be somebody. Okay, everybody in this room knows that image because it is that powerful. I'm going to show you a picture of my son instead. When I saw that picture, I had a unique experience with it. The day before it went viral, I was hanging out on Twitter, as one does, and I saw a journalist mentioning this photo. It had been posted and put up on a Turkish website, a Turkish news site. The journalist was from an extremely popular journal, and they were saying that they were going to publish this image the next day. They were gonna push it out there, a picture of a dead boy on a beach. I'm not sure why they decided to talk about that on Twitter the day before, but I have a good reason to believe that they were nervous about it and that they wanted to get a little bit of reaction from their colleagues because there was still some time to retract the photo in case somebody came up with something that they weren't thinking about. 
When people were discussing the photo, almost universally, everybody said, please do it, publish it. Well, they did, and the photo went viral. So here's a puzzle for you. What was it about that photo that had such an impact that every single person in this room knew about it? It's not as simple as bin Laden is dead. We could have all in this room been sitting in that same secret room saying, when the world hears about this, it's going to spread. We just knew it because we knew our environment and we knew the idea. It was an easy one. This one, not so easy. Why this boy? There are so many images of this type of a scenario that we've seen. The photographer had taken so many more that same day. Another woman who was in the same boat had her kids drown, and she couldn't understand why the world was giving all the attention to young Ion and not her kids. What was it that the publishers of this journal knew that allowed them to take the risk to publish it, believing that this image that we're so desensitized that we actually do not want to pass on, it's the type of images it's the type of image that has intrinsic properties that we don't want to pass on. It doesn't work. Well, they knew their environment so well. They'd been reporting on it and studying it day in and day out, day after day, week after week, year after year. They'd seen these images. They'd put them out there. Nobody was paying attention. They were feeling pissed. They were, they were tired of it. Enough is enough. Put the photo out. Well, they knew at least one thing. They had a distribution network, so they could force it out. If I were to put that image on my Twitter, it wouldn't have the distribution network that was needed to push it. They had a force to begin a tipping point. But what they knew was that they were not alone, that we all around the world felt the same way and that things were changing. We were feeling our environment and the content they knew was different. The intrinsic properties of that photo was not actually like any dead kid who had washed up on the beach. He looked just like all of our kids. He didn't look just like a Syrian. He could have been a Syrian. He could have been an American. He could have been French with his little red shirt and his socks and his shoes. If you were to go and look through big data and statistics, I don't think you would have been able to predict that this was the meme that would fly. You would have had to have a sensitive understanding of the environment and a sensitive understanding of other ideas and how they spread. I'm trying to say that underneath the funniness, underneath all of these silly pictures that don't go very deep, quite frankly, after they get passed around and forgotten about, there's a true study. There's true value to a meme and to understanding how information flows. And if we don't take better attention and pay closer attention to how this information flows, We'll live our lives as vessels. We'll be the one on Facebook passing on the weak ideas. We'll have lost control, and other people will come along, and they will put up barriers. We're seeing our information already being controlled into silos, and they're doing everything that they can to destroy that network that we had. We're going now back in the other direction. Even the best ideas no longer flow. So in order to master, in order to understand the markets, in order to understand our culture, you simply need to understand memes. Thank you.